welcome to this special episode of Through Her Eyes. I'm Zainab Selby. Today, we celebrate International Women's Day and Women's History Month, exploring a topic being asked repeatedly in the news, in politics, and in entertainment. What do women want now? HuffPost Yahoo Care conducted a national survey to try to answer that question. Overwhelmingly, it found that women want more, more pay, more positions of power, and more opportunities that take them to the next level. Today, you'll be hearing from top female newsmakers, from Representative Ilhan Omar, Salam, how are you? to environmental activist Aaron Brockovich. It's about preparedness. To the one and only Queen Latifah. <laughs> Shoot a music video, you go that way, I go this way. To get their take on this all important question What do women want? Our survey reveals 42% of women think female politicians in the US are held to a higher standard than male politicians. Our first guest knows all too well the pressure of women in politics. Representative Ilhan Omar is one of more than 100 women elected to Congress in November. She was born in Somalia, but after civil war ripped apart her home country, she spent four years in a refugee camp. She came to the U.S. when she was 12 years old. She's now making history as one of the first two Muslims to be elected in U.S. Congress and the first woman to wear a headscarf on the House floor. And her election has had a major impact on her daughters, Isra and Elwad. I want to start with your daughter. We have to thank her for her Instagram, uh, you know, films and photos and all of that. How has her seeing you become a congresswoman impacted her dreams for the future? She has always had dreams that are bigger than the ones I've had for myself at her age. And I know, or at least can feel, that because I am able to live out dreams that I didn't even know I had, that her dreams might be a little more accessible to her um, today than they were when she made them first. International Women's Day on March 8th is a particularly important day to Representative Omar. It is the anniversary of the day she arrived to the U.S. as a refugee from Somalia. So what do you want for women in America and internationally on that day? I want us to stop celebrating marginal wins. I want us to fully recognize our place in society and, and to own our power. In almost every society across this world, women are the majority in their communities. But we have gotten really comfortable and complacent in our inferiority in society. My only wish is for us to own our power, recognize our power, and to step into our power. We asked women whether it would be a good thing for women in the U.S. to have more positions of power. What do women want now? 83% of liberal women do want more positions in power, and only 29% of conservative women agree. My next guest, Jamila Jamil, is a powerful celebrity activist using her platform to call out everyone who profits from selling lies about beauty. Wonderful. Jamil, who stars on the hit NBC show, The Good Place, is taking on everyone in the industry from Kim Kardashian to Avon. And she started a campaign on Instagram, I Way, encouraging women to celebrate the aspects of their lives beyond numbers on a scale. You've been like fearless in taking on the issue and you're not shy about naming anybody. I mean, you took on the Kardashian and called them double agents for the patriarchy. Tell me more about that. A double agent for the patriarchy is someone who perhaps unknowingly is selling a rhetoric that the patriarchy benefits from us believing in. And so if you tell women that they should worry about their weight and their looks all the time, you are unfortunately recycling that patriarch 
patriarchal narrative that made you feel that about yourselves. We are world leaders, we are designers, we are scientists, we are mothers, we are friends, we are huge contributors to society. We are supposed to be treated like an equal gender, but how can we become equal if we are given all this extra homework of being uh, very, very thin and completely flawless in every single way and looking forever young, even though time is coming to us all, gravity is coming to us all. Jamil says she has an important message for Women's History Month. Every month should be Women's Month, and so make sure that every every day is your day, every month is your month, and you are very important, and none of us would be here without you. So thanks, and believe in yourself, and, and give yourself a little bit of love, because there's a lot of hate coming at you from every single direction. That is a good one. That's a good one. And International Women's Day, March 8th, what's your message for women around the world? International Women's Day is a wonderful, wonderful reminder for us to be intersectional which is something that I myself am still learning about and we must not neglect each other's experiences and we must not only take care of our own, we must take care of each other. Another warrior for women and the planet, Erin Brockovich. What she wants for women right now, clean water and accountability from big industry. I'm here for these victims to ensure that they are made whole again. Erin Brockovich is an environmental warrior best known for her fight against a California utility company for contaminating the drinking water with toxic chemicals linked to cancer in Hinckley, California. Her battle was portrayed in the iconic Julia Roberts film, Erin Brockovich. First of all, since the demur, we have more than 400 plaintiffs in. Let's be honest, we all know there are more out there. More than 20 years later, Brockovich is still fighting toxic chemicals, traveling to communities across the United States to lobby on behalf of the people. She tells me what she wants for women now. What are your wishes for women in America? Uh, just try to cut out the noise. And I know that's not easy to do because, oh my gosh, we're in such demand as moms and career women. And it's really difficult. But I believe in the bottom of my heart, if you can just find that space in that moment where you have some silence, listen to yourself, believe in yourself, pat yourself on the back, give yourself that hug. And you know what? Say, I'm really damn proud of what I've done, who I am, and who I can That's become. Beautiful. I want to, you know, because a lot of women see you're an icon for a lot of women, for me. And people don't realize that icons are also working on their own issues. Oh, I definitely <laughs> work on my own issues. Oh, can Great. we talk? So when you're oh, talking about the, the doubt and like believe in yourself, you're talking out of that, out of an experience so much out of an experience. And I've had to learn that it was when I spoke out and I wasn't afraid to tell somebody that I'm flawed and I'm imperfect and I'm scared and I'm sad and I don't know what to do or I've made a mistake, can you help me? It's so hard for us to do that. But it is the most freeing and most empowering experience you have. It is okay to be flawed. You know what I tell my kids? And totally vulnerable. I tell my kids all the time, what is normal? How do we define it? And, and if you see it, run like hell. <laughs> we are all different and it's okay to not be perfect. Welcome back to Through Her Eyes. I'm Zainab Selby. As we celebrate women this week, who better to celebrate than the one and only Queen Latifah? She broke barriers in the music industry as one of the first female rappers ever, and she's been breaking barriers ever since. I'm gonna mess around and flip the scene into revert. With what? With a little touch of ladies first. Queen Latifah's songs of the 80s and 90s delivered a message of female empowerment and self-respect. 20 years later, she's an actress, producer, singer, and songwriter who still stands up for women and people of color. What she wants for women now? Pay equity and equality for women in the music industry. The Me Too movement has impacted or started change in some industries like Hollywood. Do you think it has changed the music industry? 
I think we got a quite a ways to go in the music business, definitely. Um, it has impacted several different industries, clearly. And, and it has to just continue, you know, it has to continue to, um, you know, to, to grow. What um, other changes you would want to see in the I music see industry? I want to see pay equity, you know. I definitely want to see pay equity in the, in the music, music industry as well. And, you know, one of the things that I faced as a young artist was marketing dollars. The same amount of marketing dollars that would be spent on one of my male counterparts wasn't usually spent on me. You know, so I had to kind of fight to get the equal amount. Um, I know several female rappers that that happened to at that time who had to fight to get those marketing dollars spent on them in the same way. So it's harder to be as successful when you're not being treated <laughs> the same way as your male counterparts. Um, but yet we still managed to strike through, you know? So. Um, I, it just pay equity is one thing for sure, and just kind of feeling safe in the workplace. You want to feel safe when you go to work. You want to be able to go to work, go hard, um, and not worry about you know having to be sexually intimidated in, in any sort of way. That's just not the place for it. And uh, you know, I, I don't think that every person who's been involved in something like that is a bad person necessarily. I think that they were raised and taught certain things and ways that was the way it was done for quite a while, but that whole way of it being done has to be deconstructed, broken apart, and reconstructed into something brand new. And what's your That's advice a, for young women who are trying to make it? Oh, just keep going, you know? I mean, move forward. You know, you have to be courage, courageous to, to accomplish your goals. There are times when you will have to stand alone and because you believe in yourself, even though people don't see it yet. You just have to, you can't always expect that everybody is gonna understand or get it, but you have to continue to believe in yourself. We asked women if they've ever experienced unwanted sexual advances. 53% said they did. The Me Too movement has resonated with the majority of the women surveyed. 83% see sexual harassment as a real problem in this country. And four out of 10 women in America think that recent attention on the issue of sexual harassment hasn't gone far enough. My next guest, Olympic gold medalist, Ali Raisman, was one of the first voices of the Me Too movement to effect remarkable change. The tables have turned, Larry. We are here. We have our voices, and we are not going anywhere. It has been a year since Larry Nasser was convicted for sexually violating hundreds of young women. Young women who were truly extraordinary, the pride of our nation. Nasser was the USA gymnastics doctor. Three-time Olympic gold medalist Ali Raisman is one of his victims. If you are to talk to your younger self, when you first felt something's wrong, what would you tell your younger self? Hmm. Uh, I mean, if I could, I don't know. I think it's hard to think like that because you can't go back in time. Right. Um, but, but the message is for younger women as well. I guess I would just say, to trust your gut and, you know, to always trust your instinct and you know your truth better than anybody else. A lot of people are saying it's young woman who's going to save the world. Do you feel there's too much pressure and it's sort of unfair that, you know, that it's all on you to change the world? I feel very grateful that we're living in a time where women are being so supported and young girls have such amazing opportunities. It's really, really awesome. Um, it's a little bit crazy to me that it's 2019 and we're just starting to see a shift where you're seeing more female leaders, but they're still not nearly enough. And I think that Time's Up has done incredible things. When you look at some of those numbers, it's really mind boggling how the inequality in our society. And so I, I just think that it's really, really amazing to be able to speak to young girls and young boys and to teach boys and young girls to be supportive of each other, to be kind to each other and to be respectful. Um, and I think that teaching each other respect is, is so important if we're trying to push for equality in our society. You have to be respectful to one another. I think you are a champion, not because you won golds 
Uh, Medals, you're a champion because you're someone who's walking her journey and sharing that in a very inspirational way Thank and you. being very authentic and honest about it, even though you're in the middle of it Thank as well. You. What's your message to American women? My message to American women would be to take time for yourself every single day. I read a quote one time that said to take five minutes to yourself every single day, at least five minutes. And that was something that really stuck with me because I think it's really important is to really make time for yourself and to know that you know your truth. If somebody doesn't believe you, that's their problem, not yours. And don't stop until you find people that will support you because there are people out there. And then also I read a book recently that said, what would your life be? if you could live in an excuse-free world. So what would your life be if, if nobody judged you or you could live anywhere in the world, you could have any job that you wanted, you could have any partner that you wanted, what would it be like, what would your friends be like and to envision that world and journal how you can get that life because you deserve that life and you're worthy of it. Welcome back to Through Her Eyes. I'm Zainab Selby. International Women's Day celebrates the social, economic, and cultural achievements of women. One of these standout women is Sarah Saldana, the former head of ICE and the first Latina to head the organization. A quarter of women we surveyed believe that having more women in leadership positions in the workplace make it a better place for them to work. Sarah Saldana, that was one of her many goals as she headed one of the most controversial government agencies in the country. Born and raised in Texas and the youngest of seven children, Saldana never thought she would one day rise to oversee an organization with almost 20,000 employees. She served under the Obama administration, but resigned when President Trump took office. As a woman of color, and a first Latino woman to, to head eyes, you were uh, also attacked for being Latina, you know, for being uh, biased. How did you handle such attacks? I was, there was a, there were a couple of entries that really bothered me, I can't, I can't uh, deny it. The one about what is a spick doing on the Senate floor when I went through my confirmation process. Um, the other one was go back to your country these are all implications that someone of Hispanic heritage cannot enforce laws. I think I proved them otherwise, both as a United States attorney in Texas and as the director of ICE. I am, an, I am a believer in law enforcement. I just think we can do it better. So what's the right way to go and tackle this it's, issue? It's roll up our sleeves and let's get things done. It's like, and this is a woman's perspective. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to offend my male uh, brethren, but you know, we see a problem. We had to solve it. I think men are better at ignoring issues and problems and things that aren't maybe right in the, in the foreground. Uh, and I know I do uh, see an issue like this and I think we really need to address it and we're not doing it. And it's, it's a tremendous failure on the part of our, our representatives that were not uh, attacking the issue. But one of her biggest life challenges came when her 25-year-old son, Michael, was killed in a motorcycle accident. That tragedy happened when you were the head of ICE. Yes, it did. How did you handle it? I mean, how did you keep it together? I had a tremendous staff. I had a wonderful deputy. I had, uh, uh, we took the first place, the plane out to LA that morning. There'll always be that place in my heart for ICE uh, because of the people I know there. So let's talk about some of your uh, tenure at ICE. Progressives attacked you for being too hard on immigration issues. Conservative attacked you for being too loose on immigration issues. You're having your own personal tragedy to deal with. How do you handle all the criticism, frankly? <laughs> well, you have to have a tough skin, mm. uh, and I grew up with a tough skin. And you say it as if I was all together all the time. I, I let me just say, I know that wasn't the case. There were very, very difficult times in there. Um, uh, I had a very strong uh, aversion 
to crying as a woman, crying publicly. Um, it's just something that I thought showed weakness and doesn't bother me a bit anymore. In our survey, we found that 85% of Black, Hispanic, and women of color see race-based discrimination as a serious problem. Reverend Jacqueline Lewis is fighting for equal rights for women regardless of race, class, or religion, in the women's movement and inside her church. I'm standing up for Jesus' teachings. No room for anti-Semitism in that. No room for that. No room for that. Reverend Jacqueline Lewis is a senior minister at Middle Church, a 900-member multi-ethnic church in New York City. What do you want for women in America? Gosh, that's a beautiful question about dreaming. I want women in America to make the same amount of money as men for doing the same work. I want women to be in charge of their bodies because they belong to us. To me, pro-choice is pro-life. It's pro-choice. I can choose to keep this baby or I can choose uh, make another choice. I want every girl child in America to never feel like there's a ceiling for her ever about math, about science, about history, about teaching, about art. You are a bad ass, amazing young woman. You can do whatever you want. I want women in America to stand up and lead because we're smart and we're resilient and we're courageous and we can do it. What do you want for women internationally? Oh, I pray for every girl in hijab that no matter where she lives, that the men in her life, the women in her life see her power and beauty. I pray that no matter what the culture is, that women's sexuality and sensuality is celebrated and not seen as something to fear. For brilliance to rise up in villages and for girl children and women to have micro industries and be able to, you know, uh, take better care of their families. I pray for a, a, a global expansive understanding of the female body as divine. That would change the world. Thank you for watching. I'm Zainab Selby, and this is Through Her Eyes.